It is uh, Monday, August 7th, the Moortown Select Board. We're here meeting at the John Hogan Meeting Room in 79 School Street. Um, so we'll start with the first item on the agenda, and that is uh, general public comments. And young man, are you here for that? I am. Yeah. If you want to kind of roll forward or step yeah. forward and state your name and let yeah. us know what you're... Yeah, I'm Claude Brown. I'm Andrew. I, uh, Excuse I... me, I'm sorry. Can you catch it? Andrew, my yeah. name's Andrew. Okay. Um, Bidwell Road, and I have like Maggie, Eric, and our son. And we've talked to Martin and Cameron a few times over the last few years about a potential reclassification of Bidwell Road. We had suggested most recently during the, the storm or the culvert without a problem or a driveway um, that he would recommend. And maybe you all would consider a reclassification if you were to, to make to an investment of bringing in a load of bill each year and it would mean to reclassify from class B to class A, I think, which would mean that you would grade it essentially one time a year if we were to pay for the fill. So you would we would pay for the fill, we would grade it. Um, and that's that basically. Yeah. All right. So that just going from class four B to class four A is what you're looking I for. I think that's what he was suggesting it would be a potential option that you all would consider that would, you know, we would invest in the driveway and it would sure. like both the town and us um, investing. Okay. Our, our standard road policy with uh, class four roads is, is exactly that. Well, he once a year he tries to hit them with with the greater and the difference between B is B has been designated that because they were in such poor shape or there were things going on that he felt not safe enough for the um, the, the greater or, or other equipment. Um, he's going to be in later. So if he, and not that I, I doubt anything he said, but no. um, certainly I think it's fair if, um, if Martin has said that's what he would suggest. Yeah. I would certainly go along with that. Um, I think most of the board would probably agree as well. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Just as long as we get from him. <clears throat> if you guys um, can sit down and I'll ask him to sit down with you and kind of put something uh, together, what you're going to do, or maybe even walk walk the property with him. Yeah. So there's an expectation. So the expectations are met and he knows exactly what he's getting into, which I'm sure he does if he suggested this. And Yeah, he was actually out. A few weeks ago, and we did talk in person um, on the driveway. So, yeah, that sounds great. All right, I really appreciate that. Yeah, yeah, he's coming in uh, in forty-five minutes to half an hour. You're you welcome to stay, but you certainly do not have to. Yeah. But at some point, we'll and will we'll, he just follow up with me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. great. That's wonderful. You know, the objective be taking a look or driving up by not the certain yeah, you know. So if you see a red pickup, here's Martin right now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Great. Hey, Martin, how are you? Good. Good. Ears ringing. <laughs> so, uh, um, so Andrew here, uh, he's from uh, Herrick Road. That's my last name, man. Bidwell. Yeah. So <laughs> you get his attention. <laughs> That's the name of the road. Yes, yeah, 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 it's off the word road. So, Martin, okay. Andrew's. Um, hey, Martin. Bye. Bye. And he said that you made a suggestion that if he was to bring in some fill, we could reclassify that into yeah. an A. Yes. I think it's uh, looking at it after the flooding, we had some issues with the culvert, had of work that we need to do, but it still, we still need to finish up um, and look at it. And I'm thinking if we get one load and like, possibly purchase, we can easily grade that once a year and keep it. So, yeah, um, if you want to maybe but, stop up with it or whatever just work with him and figure it out where you yeah. need it what to need it and how to go forward and um the very short road so yeah i think it's uh, mm -hmm. easy to you know just getting it shaped up once you're in the road and yeah okay. i think it's um, i looked earlier it's it's point one three yeah. yeah so about 700 yeah. feet probably yeah yeah, yeah. sounds about right yeah they they could <laughs> not be talked and i said that the appropriate thing to do would be to bring the flight for it Yep. Yeah. All right. Well, Lee said, as long as you guys can uh, get an agreement there and you're good with it, we're, we're good. So um, we'll go ahead and do that. I got to make it official, make a motion that we uh, reclassify Bidwell Road from uh, 
class 4B to class 4A. With appropriate. Oh, with appropriate um, uh, 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 fill uh, that, um, that the Harris will pay for and uh, Martin will grade and uh, well, there we and then plow from now on. Or not plow from now on. Sorry. <laughs> no, it was the side again. All right. <laughs> It'll be in the meeting notes. Um, and then as far as it being graded, that's in the yeah, class yeah. four A policy. Yeah, yeah. So once the road's moved up there, it just falls under that. Well, no, except that he's going to provide the material. Right, yeah. exactly. So, I mean, when we're all gone, if he's still there 15 years from now, it's all new Martins in Florida, you're in Arizona, under the ground. Oh, man. Uh, you know, it's, 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 it's in a meeting notes, you know, from 2023. Again, in the, in the class four policy is we don't bring in dirt or anything. So oh, okay. it's going to be his responsibility. Okay. Yeah. Great. And to keep it, that's to keep it up to that. It yeah, no, falls no. below. <laughs> it falls below a again by getting too um, yeah. treacherous. Then it'll right. The fall on it. So, all right. Um, I'm going to vote here, though. Uh, all in favor, vote aye. 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 Thank you, Kelly. Thank you. All right. So, um, do we have anyone else for open uh, public discussion? Johnny. Yes. I want to. Uh, Comment about the signage, new signage on uh, Mortown Mountain Road. It's a flashing light. I'm warning about a low bridge or a public bridge in the uh, flashing light to the South Hill Road. And I was concerned about the need for that and the visual pollution it provides. The flashing light runs 24 hours a day. And uh, I'm not sure about the need. Uh, in fact, I think it was brought the attention of Mortown, I'm not sure how it's done, by Northview. And in fact, there's two towns between here and Northview, including Northview. There's a part of Berlin and then Northview as well. And the sign can be placed uh, in a different area. It can be placed just short of Asentine Road. You can give a, an outlet to be able to notice at that point. But I was wondering why we had to have that sign where it is. Well, that was brought to us at Martin. Was it you? Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, so we just, it was put up for, obviously, so the trucks don't go through and, and damage the bridges on the other side, and common sense is let's catch them earlier than, or sooner than later. Um, you know, you're the first one that's been in here, and how long have they been up? A month? A month, six weeks. Six weeks. So I really haven't heard much pushback or any pushback at all uh, at this point. Is it driving uh, by that bottle of you, or can you see, you see it from your home, or? No, I just drive it by. It drives by me, Britt, and the fact, you know, we regret it becoming more urbanized. Right. Or the new signage and so on. This is one more. There's actually two signs. There's one that's by the substation if you go yeah. on the rise, and then the second one. And as I say, if Northfield's concerned about it, they could put a sign I understand catching four, but you know, if you catch them there, where are they going to go? They're not going to go south the road, they're going to go half the way. Uh, well, I think the thought is that they won't turn around and they'll proceed to the bridge and, and cause more damage to these historic bridges that we're trying so hard to preserve. 
Well, that is, I understand, but uh, we've been all been here a long time and uh, we've managed without it. Uh, I don't think there's been any recent incident where they have two large trucks in the truck. There have been a number of recent incidents where substantial damage has occurred to those trees. It, it's it's unbelievable how often it happens. Yeah. <clears throat> I don't think I realized that it was going to be a flash of light all the time. The first time I went by, I thought my car activated, which I didn't realize. And then I was coming down the hill the other way, and I saw it was flashing all the time. I'm like, I don't know. Um, could, could it be a sign that's maybe activated by a vehicle? I don't know. Well, that's, yeah. well, that was my point if he was concerned when he drove by. Or was he said he see it from his house? If he's seeing it blinking from his house day and yeah, night, I don't understand. Yeah, but it's still, going to activate when he drives by, when he's going to see it all the time he drives by. And my concern is about you know, more visual pollution and our responsibility as more time. I understand the North could be happy, but uh, as I suggest, uh, it could be placed much further along. There's no other, <laughs> other places for trucks to escape once they go past that sign here. So it makes a difference if they go past it here, they're going to end up in the bridge. Uh, there could be a sign, as I say, just before as the time, which is, um, I think, the only place we can escape where we can go up over our supply and down, then the idea of this road, which is actually, you know, depending on the size of the vehicle, I can imagine 18 wheelers mm -hmm. going up over and coming in a couple of bridges. Right. But uh, why it's small towns responsibility to have it there. As I say, this Berlin is in the they didn't approach Berlin, but I know Thompson maybe catch them well beforehand. You know, I think maybe we can reach out uh, the idea or, or, or brought it up maybe of a sign that's uh, activated by. Um... Well, it's basically the same thing. It's Right. Um, and then we are, I mean, again, our, you know, our neighboring town has asked us for favor and we, we try to work with them, you know, as they let us put sand up in their yard during yeah. the last, this past flooding area. So, uh, you know, I don't want to alienate them over, a, you know, a flashing sign, but. Have they done this? As I say, you know, we are seeing, as I say, more leave the term urbanization. I think you understand. Right. Yeah. We're yeah. losing the real world or bucolic character of the area. I mean, it, it's a point. We could just put a standard sign there on our and the Moortown side and let them put the flashing one on their side. I don't know if that would be much better. better. So, but we have to choose half of so now, now that we have a complaint, I mean, we can say, well, we have residents complaining. Yeah, no, I don't have other people say it. I don't say it. Yeah. I've heard from other people as well. Yeah. Okay. Which is going to like it. Martin, do you mind reaching out? And seeing what kind of pushback you get from them and asking if it would be a, an issue for them to move that beacon sign. Oh, so we were there was some discussion of putting the beacon in the long way in the first sign. Um, that was obviously going to impact um, residents, so, you know, visually yeah. being in their stuff. So we chose the second sign just for that purpose that it wasn't going to impact any, but you know, residents. To, to his point, do they have a sign in the north field with a beacon on it? No, there's no sign. There's no sign. So we're, we're taking the run of the beacon. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, just reach out on that. Don't mind. So, yeah, Johnny, we'll have Martin's going to reach out and see uh, what we can do about that. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. Thank you. Of course, it has to be there. I perfectly understand. I do have an example that I have for some other people. As well, so okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. all right. Um, who's next, sir? Are you here for? I'm just here to hear about the family relief and any class four road uh discussions, but I did bring snacks as I usually do. So I was gonna say, well, thank, thank you very much. much. Yeah, uh, there's a piece of those so up. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That comes from uh, in Stowe, right? 
Uh, yeah, I work in stone, so I'm uh, no um, stranger to signage is uh, our roads are related, but I live on Brownsville Road at the end there. Uh, I do want to commend Martin and the team for all the work they do. We are getting my word past them. Um, it, it's a relief to be able to get out of it. So, Good. Well, thank you. Uh, and thank you for the snack as well. Thank you, Mark. You would check on that. Amazing. All right. So next up, uh, if there's no public, let me make sure here. Stefan, you don't have anything for public comment? No. Nope. All right. Um, so now we have Sherilyn, Sherilyn Brown, coming up with the tax rate, something we're always looking forward to each year. So um, Sherilyn shared did this uh, this with me um, on Friday, so I got to take it all weekend long. Uh, Sherilyn, very well done. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, so if you want to go ahead and uh, share, you may. You want me to go over each one? Yeah, why don't you? Okay. So the proposed budget is what was voted on in March at town meeting. And that's uh, $1,455,103. And the proposed floor articles are what was voted on on the floor, as well as the articles that were voted on Aust uh, Australian ballot, like the $10,000 to the survey fund and all that. So that's another 79,224. And the veteran exemption is something that we have never put into the budget and the auditors this year said that we should be putting the difference that because the town has to make up that difference on the extra that we had voted in on probably 10, 15 years ago, anyway. Right. Um, so that would be the town's portion to make up. And, and just to be clear, so that veterans get a certain percent off their, their tax bill. And that's why that is, that, and that is 4,700. Uh, and so that is a total of uh, $1,539,027 that we have um, requested to expend this year. And last year we ended up um, technically with a deficit, as you all knew, but after the audit this year and speaking with them, they said that we should take this as the 17,987 as a surplus because that figure is for all years. So rather than throwing in just 2022, we will be taking a surplus for all the years, which that 17,000 was sitting in the grand, uh, the, the, excuse me, the general ledger. So that helps us out there. And the, you good with that, Tom? Yep, no, very good. And the anticipated income is like it. Um, the only new one that's on here is the very first one for the municipal treasury of 8,000. That's never been added in either. And it was recommended by the auditor um, during the audit to add in that figure. That's an estimated figure that we'll be receiving back from the education from the state of Vermont. And so there, as you can see, what is there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight um, lines of anticipated income. And that anticipated income is $245,340, um, leaving us. Um, Can we back up to that? Yep. Uh, I just want to point out on the Duxbury fire contract where it says 14,000 versus the 7,000 from the previous year. That's because Duxbury did not pay last year's 2022 on time. So we actually received those funds in 2023. So it's normally 7,000, but this year it's going to be 14,000. Sorry, Tom. I don't know. You're, you're good. Um, so our request is, uh, as I said, a million five hundred thirty-nine thousand twenty-seven dollars We have our um, surplus of 17987 our anticipated income of uh, $245,340. So that leaves us with a net request um, for taxes of $1,275,699.20. Um, our grant list this year was $2,315,313.96, um, giving us a municipal tax rate of 55 cents. Um, and that's up four cents 
from last year. Uh, last year was uh, 51 cents. Um, so on all good, um, we moved down the paper. Um, we have our residential tax rate. So now this is when uh, we're adding the school rate in. Um, school rate has gone up significantly. It's uh, 194 as opposed to last year's 177. So um, everyone's sitting around this table when we were asked those questions on you know, what happened to our taxes. We don't wanna bury the school, but just be clear that um, the increase is coming from, from the school. Um, so that leaves us at a residential tax rate of uh, 249. Um, and then a uh, because the school tax rate is figured differently on non-residents, um, the actual non-resident tax is actually less at 241. Is that mostly labor at the schools, the increase, or is it just everything? It has to do with our grand list, our CLA. As well. Yeah. I mean, we've got spending on that end, and then we've got the, the grand list uh, common level of appraisal. Um, mm -hmm. And that's one reason why, or that is the reason why we're doing a um, reassessment uh, this is going on now. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that'll bring it up, which brings that uh, multiplier down. level. So um, any questions for Cheryl and on this? Concerns. All right. Um, is there a motion to uh, accept the tax rate as um, shown? I will make that a motion to set the tax rate at the residential tax rate at 2.4945 and non residential at 2.4156. And the components of that being the municipal rate at 0.55 and the school tax rate at 1.9445, resident and non resident of 1.8656. Kelly, any other discussion on the tax rates? Um, so, Carolyn, this is all go out tomorrow, probably. Are you coming to help? Yeah. <laughs> A couple of yeah, I was gonna say, give us a little. All in favor, but I. All right, all right. I, I you yours. No, you don't worry about it. Thank you very much, everybody. All right, and um, now bringing back the band, we got Cheryl Brown. Cheryl, let's pull up. So, as you've all, if not, you haven't been reading any emails, um, Cheryl Lynn has stepped, uh, Cheryl, Lynn, Cheryl has stepped up to help um, during this period of uh, flooding and FEMA relief um, because it is a very technical um, time. And, and Cheryl went through it with uh, Irene, and so her expertise is greatly appreciated um so cheryl if you want to go ahead and let us know what uh is going on so far um do you have any questions first of all i'm sure we will okay. um, um so what's going to happen with this is uh, we've met the threshold um washington County met the threshold so on the 7th of july there was declaration 4720 um, announced um which opened up your town as long as we had $3,800 of damage. And, and I believe uh, Martin's um, worksheet has indicated that we certainly have that. Um, so what will happen is um, we will get 75% of eligible costs reimbursed. Um, we have um, the FR standards, which are, um, e they're called ERAF static, means state of the mind, which was in place, I'm sure it still is, which means we have our zoning up to what standards? 
we have met five criteria set by the state, which will give us another 10%. And hopefully the governor does what he did during Irene and kicks in another 5% from the state. So our bottom line for the town of Moortown should be um, that we can carry about 5% of the total flood costs for the eligible, eligible costs. Um, that would be uh, if the governor kicks in the extra 5%. Um, so Sharon and I were at a workshop, a virtual meeting on 731 with the state and learned a few things. Um, we registered in the portal, so Moortown is eligible um, for to send in our paperwork when FEMA gets around to sending a representative to Moortown. Mm -hmm. um, then there will be a kickoff meeting. Um, we'll let Martin know when that is so he can ask questions, come to the meeting and ask questions. Because with Martin and ANR present, um, that once the person comes around, that will kick off site visits to your, to your sites that have um, uh, problems. You will need latitude and longitude photos and damage dimensions on those properties for that meeting, uh, which I'm sure you always have power you have pictures. You can go on Google Earth and make the latitude and longitude. I'm sure you have that. And then the damage dimensions. Um, and then we will be scored to a recovery scoring management worksheet, which means simply that projects in under 250,000 um, will be brought back to the original design uh, by a FEMA representative coming around and estimating the work like they did during Irene. You know, they give you the money. Um, they give you what they say that they're going to pay for what that amount is, and that's what we get. You, and we talked a little bit about Lover's Lane. Sounds like there's some mitigation that may be needed on Lover's Lane. Okay, so Ben Rose, and I have um, I have his number in here. This is a printout of the worksheet that we did. It's going to be information contact in here. Um, everything that you need, the information that I'm telling you tonight was all in here, and contact information for that mitigation, you'll talk to Ben Rose. He's our mitigation, I put his, um, put his contact information here. And he is the one who you will want to come look at that. We've already had ANR. You're gonna to wanna to have hydraulic tests done on all of your projects to make sure that any culverts that you're putting back in um, the final. You haven't finished these projects yet. You want to make sure that the, the covers and whatnot that you put back in are hydraulically correct as per our codes and standards, or we won't pay for that. So if any of them need to be mitigated, Ben Rose is your guy. He's the one who, why? We got the money from more broke those culverts that were smaller. I had to fight for it, but we got it. Um, so I think that in that area over there, Martin, that's what we'll want to do this time for these other culverts because that's that's the second time that those kind of wiped out, right? Um, no, uh, yes, no. I mean, we second time we've had the flooding. Um, two of the folders that wiped out and I agree were replaced with box folders that hold up to the market as well. So that obviously the right approach on any of the bigger um, folders. Um, so we are already. Like for that area where I met you guys for lunch yeah, that day. That's already, um, Jared Moore from uh, Stream Alterations has already said that's a box folder. He, you know, 95% sure that's a box folder. But we have to tap it to get through the wind. Right. Um, so obviously, we have to tap now with two four four folders. 
and um, he did the uh, math and what that was across that they close to what the six foot forward is. So we're good there for barring another event. Most right. Thing is that but this mitigation, we'll have to do that there for that. Yeah, 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 that there, right? yeah, yeah. It's really long as well. Up there, as is long as we comfortable with Wardbrook, we can add on to what we have there and make it work. But even there, long as Lane is, we're rapidly running out of time to think through what to do with that, and that's going to need to take going to need some rapid decisions, which has been very frustrating working through this process to how slow it moves away. It's, I've got conflicting reports when I started to leave everything rough temp, so I can see it rough temp. And then two weeks later, after this, I get emails saying it's okay to put it back to pre disaster conditions. Very frustrating to get contradicting information from. He is getting contradicting information, as I have too. Um, so yeah, it has been frustrating. So I think we have to, uh, on that, these situations where we're getting this contradicting information, we need to um, certainly um, document what you're doing. Um, yeah, we, yeah, we are really, track. Yeah. Very close, but, if, but try to get, and we need to figure out what is the right direction to go here. Um, I'm census tell us at this point, we need to start putting this stuff back together um, or else, it's going to be a, a big mess this winter. Um, Lovers Lane, have did you, were you able to reach out as far as a temp bridge at all to check with them? As far as for that, I, I had a site visit with Dream Alterations and Michelle Rathman from the state and looked at the site and then forwarded on to her you know, supervisors and stuff. So. They're aware of it, and just not sure they're going to move fast enough for what we have going on. Then we have residents wanting different signage and whatnot for the lovers' plan. I'm not comfortable writing off on whether the road should be closed to all traffic, whether it's just residents or somewhere in between. So. And I think that's where some of the conflicting information comes because if if the project is going to be mitigated, it's going to be over two hundred and fifty thousand, right, Martin? Okay, so then when once you hit over two hundred and fifty thousand threshold, you have to follow FEMA procurement standards to the letter. You have to put it out to bid for this permanent work. You have to get engineering. You have to put that out to bid, kind of like we did the bridge. Right. You have to put all that out to bridge. You've got to put the bids out on the Vermont Work website too, so there's equal opportunity. So that's where the conflicting information is coming from. It's the size of the project. A project of under 250000 like Martin has done on the other ones, um, he can. they still have to go out to bid, but he can do that by email. You know, send it up to three. Doesn't mean that you have to pick the lowest, the highest. You know, they're not going to go on that. Right. They're going to go on who the board thinks will do the best job. You know, if they're 200 bucks higher or whatever, but you think they'll do a better job, things like that. But that's where the tough part comes in the Martin because if it's going to be over $250,000, the procurement, um, has to be followed by the letter. And that's where Ben goes. Um, I've already called him up three times. And I said, you know, can you start to work and do this? And that's when he explained that, um, well, when they told you to get the road back in shape, then that's okay for some projects. But the other projects, like when I explained briefly what Martin kind of did about, you know, finishing the work, but he's not happy with it, you know, as far as holding and things like that, you know, what Martin's got concerns. And he says, well, then we'll discuss that some in the, in the workshop. So Martin is absolutely right. There are conflicting information. 
and that's where it comes from. So how should we, I mean, um, because I mean, something's gonna be done on this. This is something that needs to be done immediately as far as, uh, oh, yeah, that's definitely any Engineering yeah. contractors and a lot of yeah. And that's tough. That's gonna to be tough too, because first of all, you've kind of got to get an estimate on how much it's gonna be. If it's gonna be over two hundred and fifty thousand, you know, you've got you know, you've got a, a little procurement process for those engineers to tell you the exact fact. And that's another thing, when you get that exact fact. Um, and you get the mitigation done through that rules, you know, they'll get it approved. If they give you 70, 750,000, that's it. They're not going to give you any more. If it goes over 10,000, that's not a real problem. So, and that's all in here. I'm not saying anything to Mike, it's not all in here. Um, so, if it'll be somebody. Yes, yeah. We're going to have to do probably the cost a million and a half, and we're going to be forced to eat. Yes, they stress it out too in that in that training that we were in. Make sure that it, yeah, they, they stress it. Don't be afraid to reach out. Ben Rose was with us, helped us right to that bridge. He is he is glad that I called him many times. He doesn't care. He'll come out. Um. But the whole process hasn't started yet. They haven't started coming looking. Um, the state was. So, Cheryl, can you push that on that end and try to and keep Martin in the loop? Obviously, because it's the appointment that he needs. But let's aim. I mean, that's our first goal: is to get him here so we can have some direction. Even whether we should be looking at this temporary bridge or, or I mean, we don't know how to. Um, Expense that in, if you will, even. You need a temporary bridge on one of the They have one down at the Middlesex Town Bar, the Mandy Bridge, the same bridge that we use to the Raceberry Bridge, if they still got it. Yeah, if they want it to, if you need a bridge. You need some. You'd have to take the ladder off, so we have to make them do. they put it right up on top of it. Right on top. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I actually, I was talking to Chris Hunt and he came up with me yeah. because I was about the scoping study, which is another thing. But in any event, uh, I asked him about it and he just thought he couldn't really get into it. He was buried with all the flood stuff as it was anyways. But he thought it would be very costly to go that to go that route to try to do something. He hasn't been down there in years and years. But, we didn't think he was the final say, but we didn't think it was a feasible way to go. That's not saying that's just one guy. Right. No, we're just looking for a temporary. Yeah, no, yeah. They may not, either that or they may not even have, they may not be, you know, road to their, their houses at all. Yeah, no, I know. All right, Cheryl, go ahead. I'm sorry. That's all right. So we have 18 months to finish all the projects. Um, Ben Rose is another one that if if you need more time, say for all this money, then you would ask him for an extension. Um, we won't even talk about the appeal process yet because it doesn't sound like any anyone from King has been around to even go around with you yet, which is really frustrating, I'm sure, and really out of sequence with what happened during Irene. I mean, those FEMA guys were here. I think it was Stuart that who was the foreman. Those guys, yeah, I mean, they were giving us project work orders when we were still in the fire station, you know. We're all a month after the fact, and I had, you know, that I did some get like nothing. Like, yeah. Everybody's hearing the same thing, you know, like, the yeah. board and stuff, but. You're going to be fine. Yeah, you're really going to be fine. You've got some good. You've got some. You're going to have some good people from the state of Vermont. They're in here. You, you're going to have some good guidance when they finally get the ball rolling. But it's, I'm sure it's very frustrating because they haven't been around. Um, and this, this is a copy of that 
um, digital reading that we might do. It's like an hour and a half, two hours long, but it's got good information, good contact. So if you've got a question on anything, um, they also videotaped it too. That's the one you said. You made your own. I sent you yeah. what he's going to give you now, but it is videotaped, and there's it's it's definitely worth watching. It's time consuming, but it's definitely worth. Um, anything about class four roads or reimbursement? Class four roads, I talked to that Rose uh, on that. Um, there is no um coverage for class four roads. I would not count that out completely. Um, we have a lot of pictures. Gary took a lot of pictures when he was trying to divert the water and fill in the holes so that you know people could get out with emergency services. I would still, I'm sure Martin will still take the FEMA people up there, look at that, um, because it needs to be put back to the original standards you know, what it was before the storm. Um, um, and I, I don't think that that should have to come out of your pocket. But I'll work with Ben Rose on that, do mitigation. But the first step would be to have that FEMA guy come up with Martin and have them tell him that they're not going to pay for it. And then I will do we go after it? Yeah. I'll go after it if that's how you want me to do it. That's what you want me to do. Yeah. I'm tenacious. No, we know that. <laughs> but we need to get um, the road, the, the class four back to their A status or whatever it have, they happen to be. Um, and some of that can be worked into other projects. <laughs> I don't want to say that that loud, but um, so we can make that happen. But um yeah so what, what's the first stage for like leverage lane it's really it's almost like you're an engineer and you're like i b trans b trans director yeah. that well they, they have a good engineer to come up with a design for what well, well, done. that's the first that's the first step they should be able to to talk with martin and say um after you get you you're getting a report from the engineers. I mean, from the panel. Um, oh, specifically, Jaron uh, looked at it, but he said that it was going to be, be as he told me that you're possibly looking at a city space for two paragraphs. Like okay, can you give me that in writing? No, they're not doing any further. Okay, um, and he and he was a stream operations engineer. Yeah, and he, um. I think the next step that you want to do is get hydraulics down there um, for the water flow for the road of the there must there must be a lot of holes. So then, then you'll want to get Ben Rose down there with your you want to get Ben Rose down there and tell him your concerns. That you think the road needs to be you know it needs to be mitigated, otherwise we're putting it pretty much after that, you know, as far as the road going out again, then put her on your concern and see what he says. And then you can come to the board and um ask him how you get a figure. You know, ask him, ask him how you can get a figure for what needs to be done. Um, because he's stressed with that meeting. You know, get your A and R involved. Get your your um, stream operations involved, and then we've got something that we can fight with. You know, if, if something needs to be mitigated. I mean, I'm just I can say like I've done I've done what I felt I could do with lower plan to the point of A and R was saved. It doesn't appear that it can happen. Uh, I'm more than happy to meet people there and stuff, but you know, if we can get this Ben Rhodes guy there, make sure that we're copied. I'd like to be at that meeting. Um, and we need to find, uh, we're going to figure out who's in charge and, and get some direction um, on how to approach that. We know we need hydraulic studies and engineering, but 
um, we really needed kind of a degree of uh, what are we looking at uh, as far as, I mean, we've looked at that, I mean, me and you look at it and we see us blasting the rock and we're not engineers, um, but we need to have some direction so we can get that. If not this um, this fall, you know, what do we do for, for the winter? Because like you said, you're not driving a truck. We're not allowing a truck to be driven no. up there. He's going fast enough. You'd be all right, right? Yeah. <laughs> we don't want to. Do you hear that, Stefan? Um, I demand hazard pay. <laughs> <laughs> um, the thing is that, as we all know, it's August first or seventh, right? We're just looking at like a timeline job schedule, um, and for the, just a temporary fix to, to something for the winter or whatever. I, I don't know how how can we push ahead to get the state or all the folks that you were just mentioning. But we really have a short window. We got about four months to pull this off, something to make it passable for the winter. You know? and, uh, so uh, Ben Wells is also going to get uh, Tim, Tim Baker. You'll hear that name. He's a FEMA recovery PA director. Tim Baker is amazing. Pardon me? Tim Baker is amazing. Yeah. Okay, he's, he's the uh, road recovery PA director. Um, the first step would be to get in touch with Ben Rose, and then you'll have a better idea for Martin what needs to happen. You know, um, yeah, no, it's, it's no, it's short for doing science. Yeah, Martin, have you tried with him yet? All right, and the number is in this packet here. Yes. So, why don't we make that a priority tomorrow? Let me know how you go with it. I'll take his number again, I'll try him as well so that we can both be, um, Kind of hunting that down, and then we can. I guess he's the key to getting this kicked off. There's really two keys to the project. There would be a, there a temporary fix, the cost of the temporary fix, and then Not exactly. hopefully next year we should be even maybe pushing it as well. But you have to burn it. So, Sharon is. Um, been doing exactly what she needed to do. Um, put, putting together awesome spreadsheets of all the different um, expenses. Any expenses that I incur, you know, like for attending meetings or anything like that, is paid 100%. It's called on Z labor. Something new this time is um, expenses from the fire department. I've seen them go by, so probably they're flushing out colors and stuff. So, Stefan, I think, um, would keep all of those records, even the engines, you know, the, the pumpers and things like that. There's an equipment sheet, and Sharon has that. She's already figured all of the equipment that we have. Um, so, you get a certain rate of pay. I think a dump truck's like 75 bucks an hour, but plus the driver. So, Stefan, were you able to hear that? I was. I've uh, I've been putting the fire truck in with our our worksheets for the highway department and which truck it was, so that we can get all that information to to get reimbursed for that as well. Thank you. And you, Martin, you still do your sheets, right? Your daily logs, which is awesome. That's going to save. That's going to save you because it gives the truck, you know, the amount of equipment. Sharon can better. You know, put that on the spreadsheets and and the hourly rates and and the hourly rates include uh, fringe benefits. So that's good too. You're not just getting the hourly rate; you're getting their benefits, fringe benefits. You know, boots if you get free boots and insurance if you get free insurance. You know, whatever. So that's um. So if you have any questions for me, other than I'll do whatever I can. Um, and Martin, just so you know, um, I'm keeping track of every road individually. So every road 
the material, the labor, everything's being done individually. So if you need to, to know if you're reaching that threshold for mitigation, I'll come see me and we'll, we'll figure it out, but it, uh, it's all going to be on them because that will include pay as well. Yeah, I think it's going to be made to email that before they were getting both to finish. Yeah. I mean, the only two that I could foresee going over the 250 is uh, the temp. Yeah. Well, it's uh, for sure. Yeah. The temp over on board growth to be um, required to be put into a box over depending on the price of that box over installed. Probably not going to reach that. So, did on Ward Brook, did you replace the culvert with what size culverts were on there to begin with? One culvert has gone back in at the same size. The um, two other culverts that we installed on the outside, one side, and the big one at Big Wells was. Um, a thick foot culvert that you're not going to be hands on. So we put the two four where to get people out that night. So that's going to eventually come back out and we get over nice and modern. So we may have, um, we may, may have questions then on if we put like the candidates in there than what could be, and we actually have high dollar tests. Yeah. So we want to get this data up there and wait and um, ask for some hair dog testing. Okay. And that'll pass. Yeah. Ray is waiting to come to the end. Uh, thank you. Is um, the fire department about their time? Uh, need the way that we reimburse? Yes. Yeah. When you were to drive the fire truck to clean out the culverts and stuff? Well, this one, yes. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah, even the truck. Yeah, the truck and the work and the work. The only thing that's not reimbursable as far as that is gas because that's included in the use of the truck. Right. Any um, questions for Cheryl or Cheryl on this? Mark? Uh, the initial emergency day, we Hired contractor that everything opened up so people could get out. Thank you. Um, so one by those initial emails saying leave it to rough, just passable. Um, basically sent them all away. Um, got the second email saying it's okay to fix it back to the pre disaster condition. The pits are all out of material, so waiting for them to make it up. But um, it is our best interest to do as much of the work ourselves as possible, and in essence, being having more to charge to be more is that uh, if I just get the contract, I mean, I'm gonna have to hire a truck to do that again. But. Why don't we think about that? And why don't you decide? Think, all right, what are we going to be able to do aside from our normal? stuff that we need to get done prior to winter um and are we going to have a time to um do this certain amount of work um, and probably there's not a lot out there for contractors right now either so but i think it'll be a combination of the two obviously you're going to need like i said you're going to need trucks um nothing goes very smooth so you you'll you'll need some help and we'll have to, I think, start with the projects that are uh, stuff the more that we're not, we don't have to, to change if we can go back to the original sizes. But it sounds like we should have a hydraulic test done on all those brooks because um, you have decided to move up the size anyways. So, I mean, I get that started. Once you have a hydraulic test, I think from there you can decide what is, if you have time or if there's a contractor that can do it. I would connect with him. Because he is very knowledgeable and 
what you can do and what you can't do and what you should be doing. So, and he was actually in Vermont during Irene. Where is he out of? Um, Midwest somewhere. All right, so I got Tim for Bacon, then we have the other guy. We okay. All right, so Martin will try to um, hunt that guy down, and then uh, find out what we can do and what we can't, but just try to get a uh, you know a, a line in the sand where we can begin. You're all set on the bidding process for the project in under two fifty then. If you if you're hiring the guys to finish off, or you you know you're thinking of three more it's another two fifty, but it does have to be bids. Even if it's email, it's fine. It, it has to be yeah, it has to be uh, yeah, I guess we can get you know, Yeah, but it's you know, it could be the one who did it before, you know, if you get the bids and you come in and you say, well, to the board, you know, he, he did a good job. This is what I feel, you know, doesn't necessarily have to be the lowest bid. If you did the process and you're, you know, an emergency state of that one was required. It was not required, no. So no, it was not required. Yes. Yeah. Just going forward now. Yeah. Good. Well, Cheryl, thank you very much yeah. for coming well, tonight you and for your time. Good Cheryl, Lynn, thank you. you. Nice to see you, Cheryl. All right, Martin, you're up now with the greater. You want to come on forward? So I've been going back and forth with um, these two, but I think my recommendation is going to be a uh, have the greater, um, not the original 140. Um, it's a 150 that uh, was a contractor cancellation. Same size machine, it's just a little more horsepower. Um, comes in at 394 900. Um, the John Deere was 392 um, on the nose. Um, the John Deere, obviously, we haven't signed anything uh, paperwork wise. It would be six months from today, would be best case scenario for that machine. So we'll be looking at spring. This Cat 150 is being built as we speak and should see it by the middle of October is what I was told today it was all uh, made sure so um, that's going to be what I recommend unless somebody has any questions or how I came to that recommendation yeah. I need a motion. Uh, John, was there any yeah. questions prior? Here. Um, no, it seems that would be great if we get a thought, actually. I think the uh, John Deere, the greater that we're currently using, it's uh, acting up troublesome with the circle that we yeah. knew was going to be an issue. So, I hope so. Yeah. That would be I do think that's good. Well, that's a whole better outlook than Yeah, that's great. I mean, that's very encouraging. So, $2,000. So, there's a spend that. Uh, you know, the cat is a more expensive machine. Uh, we will be in this trade. We will be keeping our original Craig Plow. Okay. They're Standard, it's a Craig Plow, whether it comes with a John Deere or a Cat, it's going to be a Craig Plow. Um, does that include the trade in and all that? Or, yeah, that's after trade. Yeah, we okay, that's what I'm not saying. So, okay, it's after trade, and we keep our original plow on the owner. There's nothing wrong with it. Yes, um, so 
Yeah. And he threw in the fenders. Yeah, he threw in the fenders. Um, didn't change the tray, but came and looked at the machine and that it was in much better shape than he had anticipated. So he threw in uh, he had almost ten thousand dollars worth of fenders on this contract machine that didn't have them for me. So I think it's a pretty good deal. I think it will be a. I think we'll see it on the back end and we're going to trade it in. I think it'll be the full this value better. And I like the uh, circle design. They're similar. I mean, they're, they have to be graders or graders, but um, I like the circle design on the cab better than the John Deere. Yeah. Anyone can drive it? It will be, well, anybody got possibly me. <laughs> It's going to need to go there. Also, the yeah, yeah, I'm over fifty, so yeah. <laughs> we're gonna buy him an Xbox. Yeah, and, yeah, and yeah. It. It's going to be a learning curve for me for everybody, but I suspect the uh, younger generation won't pick it up faster than I will. Yeah, there's so much electronics in that though. Can you just go in and turn it on and set it and? Yeah, no, I didn't so forget it. Drive it and move the board <laughs> and everything. So yeah, but he'll die. So, Alvin, did you want to make a motion on that? I make a motion we uh, proceed with the purchase of a cat one fifty greater at a purchase price of three hundred ninety four thousand nine hundred dollars, deliverable sometime in October. Second. Thank you, John. Any other further discussion on it? All in favor? Would I? All right. All right. Uh, the only other question I had was regarding um, vacation in sick time. So um, it's shaping up that we're not going to possibly be. I mean, we're still going to take vacation in sick time. I mean, we we need to we need to have downtime and stuff, but uh, it's quite possible that we're not going to be able to schedule. I mean, we're in August and we all have a fair amount of time left. Um, definitely going to put us behind. I just wanted to find out if we do want to roll over time. So we have it left. I mean, we'll do our best to get it used up. But I, I think now we roll over what three days is that in, yeah, the, in the policy? Days, yeah. Why don't we see where you guys are? I mean, I don't think anyone's really objects to it. Um, but we certainly want you to try to take time off yeah. um so you refreshed and you're not burnt out doing whatever <laughs> um but also there's work you know it's like we all have work on you yeah um so we'll, we'll we'll work with you on it but um you know don't try to stack it up let's try to use it yeah and, um, for, um right. but we'll figure something out and we will certainly do have doubt <laughs> Yeah. Um, one other tip. So the um, material from the parking lot, we've been um, taking the best of that material um, to our pit and looking at through our screen. I think that'll be a material that it's not, it's not ideal. It's not great for two or three, but I think for class four, we may be able to be uh, get some material down where needed. No oh, good with that. Um, but just gonna take make time to make that happen. So. All right. Very good. Well, thank you. Anything else you got? Yeah. Anything else for Martin, you guys? Thanks, Martin. Thank you. thank you for all you guys do. You're welcome. All right, Ms. Corey, how are you? You want to roll on up? Okay. Uh, so I'm here to sort of give some updates on the town hall and uh, sort of what we've been doing in terms of searching for a custodian, some ideas uh, that I have to share and options. Uh, and then the only thing I'm really looking for guidance on tonight is sort of what to do about the here and now while we operate without the custodian position being filled. But the, all the other stuff to me is just starting a conversation for you guys to think about in the weeks ahead. Um, 
So I posted the custodial position twice on Front Porch Forum, and it's also on the town website. Um, I had one person reach out, but we failed to meet on three separate occasions. And then when I reached out again, I haven't heard anything back. So that doesn't seem to be anywhere. Um, and this is sort of has been familiar to me because of uh, the library assistant position also being sort of short number of hours. It's just a hard thing to find the right person for. Um, so I don't know that, you know, like uh, paying for a classified ad. I don't know if that's the right next step because right. that's money and I'm not sure that we're going to get the same kind of results or not. <laughs> so that's what's been done so far. So in trying to think about, well, as we move forward, as we're trying to rejuvenate this building into a community center with multi-purpose library services, private events, community programming, you know, what's the, what's what sort of the, the future look like in terms of that building maintenance and facilities management. Um, so I sort of did two exercises, two options to, to think about and roll over. Um, and the first option is really something that Sasha even brought up right at the beginning of like, and, and what has been done in the past. I only did four copies. Yeah. Um, Thanks which is to just try to fold this job into some other part-time position. And I spoke with Nicole, our library assistant, and she was willing to fold these responsibilities in to uh, and add in <laughs> about two hours a week. So it'd be 11 hours total for that. For the two positions, I think it makes sense to keep them as separate positions and not make the tasks part of the library assistant. Um, so if you look at that and increase the pay to roughly what the custodian position is advertised at, 1945 an hour, so I just used 20 for easy math. Uh, we're looking at about a, roughly 11,500 for the year to manage the space, maintenance, repair, clean, and uh, rental coordination, along with supporting the library with the current tasks that she does for her nine years. Um, currently, she gets about $8,000 for the year for her nine hour week library assistant position. So that's kind of option one in terms of the investment you can make into the space and making sure it's maintained and managed and rentable. You know, for instance, there was a light dependent light out before we had a private rental and it was actually Custodian Don and his son-in-law came and changed the bowl. Um, thank you. Uh, so the other option, which is maybe bigger picture, longer term, is to just consider a facilities manager position for all the town buildings. I know when I first started, there was an effort to sort of take stock of all the town buildings and create a maintenance plan and a schedule for it. Um, this would obviously be a, a larger investment, but it would probably be more efficient to have somebody that's in charge of making sure all three buildings get clean. Am I right? There's only three town owned buildings. Yeah. Um, I know the town garage was interested in, in being cleaned. Um, and I was just facing the hours that I jotted down as a hypothetical at it's 80 hours a year, roughly, for the town hall custodial tasks. So if you do that type three, it's about 240 hours per year. But that might create a position that's a little more attractive to somebody. Or maybe there's a property management company, and that would be less expensive. I'm not really sure. I, I didn't really have time to cost any of it out. I assume it would be more expensive than option one. But in the end, it, it just might work better. So. And then I put option three question marks because I those are kind of the two paths I saw forward, but I'm interested to hear if there are other ideas or thoughts around, you know, how to get these these um, duties completed and performed. And just something to mull over for the, for the next meeting or something as well to think about it. Really. 
Yeah, no, it's it's hiring people. It's hard. I mean, we any position we've had in our town where we have everyone coming up. Yeah. Um, you know, limited hours. Um, yes. and even we pay pretty good. It's still hard to get um people. So ben combining Jerry's pays twenty two dollars. Who's Ben and Jerry's? Do they go work at their soup shop? Yeah. I learned that from my daughter. Do you work in there doing that? No, she should be. My girls did that for a few years. I mean, it's it's more the custodian is more than just a, you know someone's cleaning and trying to help. Some you know someone's or take dealing with the clean, making sure the rental guy and t person who comes is aware of what they have, and then when they're done doing the walkthrough, they let them in and out. And set up tables, set up chairs. tables, chairs. Actually, I did yeah. want to point out the top of this sheet is I just sharing that time commitment of an uh, example private rental. Um, we just had one happen on the 29th. So you'll see it took approximately 12 hours of work. Consider that on the time. Um, and right now we're charging $175 for the non-resident four-hour fee. So in terms of thinking about these future options and, and how they might balance out in the budget, it may be worth you know revisiting the fee schedule too. Right. Um, Are you getting more inquiries into the use of the, the building? I'm sorry. Are you sorry. getting more inquiries into the use of the buildings? Yes, um, not a ton, uh, but definitely. And actually, we do have one kind of exciting use. There's a martial arts group that will be hosting weekly classes there. Um, and so, you know, that's, yeah, that's going to be an ongoing use. That's actually one of the here and now questions I have. I'm hoping to get some guidance tonight on sort of the cleaning for that. Um, use, but yeah, I would love to hear hear any quick thoughts. If these are the right directions to be going, you know, obviously I spend more time researching them. Or if there's another option, I'm not even thinking about. Well, I was going to mention actually the anticipated income town hall event. We'll, we'll actually have more this year because just with the martial arts guy, it'll be you know. It's going to be like, you know, it's what we were square renting for three months for 450, right? We did it. We're doing a six month right. trial with this, and it's going to be paying in two month increments. Right. Good. What, you know, what was that? I forget what the three month is. Mm, I would have to look at that because he's a resident. So that's right. good. really, we're just trying to, we don't need to make that money right. off of it, which is good. I mean, I like making money. I love money. No, no, no. 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 right. We just want to just. Yeah, keep the building in use right. and uh, keep the cobwebs out of it. Yeah. Um, I think your option one is is probably something that we can uh, we want to consider in the in the shorter term. Um, you know, I just don't think you like you said you can advertise you're here to hell and back, and you're still not going to get yeah. someone to come in and work two hours a, a week. I mean, to clean two new assistants ago. It was a year and a half before we had our library assistant position filled. Right. And so this kind of actually helps both, you know, there it's a win-win. It helps you keeping an assistant because you can pay her, um, give her more hours and possibly um, uh, more more per hour. Yeah. Um, and if you're taking on more responsibilities, well, certainly I think that's warranted. Um, I don't know. Twenty dollar an hour is, is where it needs to be, but certainly there's a something there that I I believe that we can work with. And and I'm kind of assuming this would sort of be next year's budget, right. so that's sort of my last um, the last bit of time that I want to take up is just between now and then, like how should we handle it? Because I I didn't I definitely didn't mind stepping in for this last private event and helping set up the tables and chairs and, and performing some of those duties, but I don't, you know, I don't have expertise in facilities management. I can barely keep my own house <laughs> running. Um, so I'm not really interested. The bag, aren't you? <laughs> He's the facilities manager at their house. Um, what do you want to so uh yeah so i'm just not sure that i want to commit to taking that on until 
January. So I'm just not sure if we want to keep renting it out or, I mean, we do, we have a cleaning service and they, they have been willing to keep the regular cleaning uh, of the space. But they love cleaning for the best. And they're not right. going to do all that setup. And right, exactly. Yeah. I mean, what I do now for the library part of setting it, breaking it down and setting it up is I recruit, you can see on here, you know, we have four to six volunteers and it takes about a half hour, which is three hours of work essentially to break it down and set it up. All right. So if we we wanted to go with that that way, so we're we're talking two extra hours a week, um, roughly, um, and how did you come up with the the twenty dollars an hour? Um. So part of it's based on the custodial position being nineteen dollars and forty five cents, mm -hmm. and I'm assuming that that pay rate was set a while ago. I mean, it was on the. Maybe Sasha can speak to that. I don't know uh, when that pay rate was decided. So, sorry, I was working off of that. Assuming now it's 2023. Thinking uh, about livable wage rate, somewhere around $23 an hour, I think, or $25. Um, so. And what is she making now? Is it 16 She's making $17.12 an hour. And in talking this through with her, she's not really willing to do the custodial work for that, right. for that, for that. Mm -hmm. given that it's already advertised as higher. Right. right. Mm -hmm. yeah. So again, this is definitely something you can consider and I can come back in a few meetings. I'm not, you know, I don't feel like you have to make a decision tonight. I don't know. Is there any reason why we should push it off? I, I mean, I just don't. I don't, I don't think. Don't I don't think we're going to find anyone any different. I mean, I think we're going to come around to the same thing. I don't think we have somebody that might be willing to do it. Um. And. But you, you know more about the budget than right. I do. What are they spending on? I think there is still separate town hall part of the budget. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I don't really know what's in there for any of this, but that certainly is in the budget now. So mm -hmm. now as far as the setup, you got something that she can handle, like Things. So I think I'm just going to recruit some volunteers to put the library stuff away. Okay. But then she could be responsible. Like this last event, they needed 50 chairs and right. stuff. And so mm -hmm. we added that in. Okay. And she could probably coordinate the volunteers yes. at right. a management level or something that would be good for mm -hmm. her. Yeah. That's um, we select seven percent on the budget for custodial worker. Yeah, we have five hundred dollars a year, mm -hmm. and then we have two thousand for building maintenance. Yeah, and um, what Sasha shared with me is that it's been about eighty hours a year. At 1945. So that's actually more than what's in the budget. Right. Like over. So she's at 1712 now, um, taking on these extra responsibilities, um, but doing again what she has been doing for the 1712. Do you think she, uh, what does everyone think about um, 19? Um, uh, what I was in, about 1980 per hour. Um, I mean, I'll have to ask her if she's willing to do that. Or not. What was her? She was she was, she was at 17, 12. Yeah, 20. I was using 20 as an exercise, like a, a you know, exercise in numbers. Okay. Based on the current advertised rate for the custodian, plus adding in 
you know, 55 cents an hour for the fact that it's 2023, not whenever that pay rate was established. Okay. Or you want to say just that I think 20, I mean, 20 something aren't going to make a difference, I guess. Yeah. I would just figure no, it on yeah, some of the other numbers point. we had. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're, well, I'm talking four months. Yeah. So and then we can re budget for it yeah. next year. So it's not going to be that much. Right. More. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So we can do that um, for 20. If that makes uh, sense with your. For your, the 11 hours a week. Okay. I think that's a fair for, for everyone. Um, and then just quickly on this cleaning question for the ongoing rental. Right now we have the library clean bumps and jumps, and that comes out of the library budget. Um, but when there's private events, then it falls in the cleaning and comes out of the town hall budget. Um, so for this weekly martial arts class, I wasn't really feeling like we needed to have it cleaned weekly after each session, but I do think the, that it probably needs to be cleaned more than once a month for space. So just looking to see if we can add in one more cleaning. So it's twice a month to come out of the town hall budget. Okay. That's seem reasonable. How many times are they going to four times or four times a week? Is that what it is? No, I have four times a month, pardon me. Four times a month. Right. Plus every week. Yeah. So three hours. That's probably that's probably fine. I mean, it's gonna be how many people uh, participate in it? Um, we, they just started advertising. It starts the 23rd of August. And I think he said there were about 20 people that were interested and actually signed up for that. Well, there's a kid, kids class. Yeah. And the kids and parents together. And then it's going to develop that. And it's certainly going to give us all a free class. I mean, actually, I was going to suggest maybe yeah. done yeah. just so the board has a, a real good handle on this. If you could we join can, the class. Oh, yeah. yeah. You want me to? Yeah. All right. Yeah. All yeah. 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 Just let us know how it goes. See if it needs yeah. cleaning yeah. up. You said there's quite a lot of older people do these classes that they really help them get, you know, coordinate together yeah. and, and really get in good shape. Yeah. I think, you know, so that's why we're suggesting that you're concerned. Okay. You know, you want your balance on your bicycle to be there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, I got to maintain that. I think it's a team of yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. 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 We need a motion for this, or do we start in the budget days? Yeah, uh, we can. I'll, I'll move to accept the um, Corey's recommendation of uh, option one for a custodian manager um, uh, with the existing part part time library staff. Um, we'll move hours up to eleven hours per week at twenty dollars per hour. Second the motion. Any further discussion on that? And then seeing uh, all in favor, vote aye. Uh, aye. Um, I, I don't think that actually should be a discussion, but <clears throat> what if he doesn't want to do it? No, then we'll start over. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I worked this through with her. Okay. And she said she's willing at this pay rate to okay. do it. Okay, that's a good sign. Yeah. Thank you. Do you want to? Um, do you have anything else on that? Uh, no, not on that. I mean, if you want to wait till we get further, we get Clark. Oh, yeah, we got Clark, and we got the uh, about the road tree. Yeah. Okay. Really good. Good. <laughs> I, 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 I would see it here. Get the We'll have a uh, town hall update to give you guys. Perfect. So wait for the whole. Okay. Very good. Thank you, uh, Corey. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. All right.
Thank you again, um, Clarky. Sorry, we're a little behind schedule, but. Uh... Uh, yeah, I have to. very, very good. I think I'll pass for now. They look great, but they're puffy and cheesy. They're what? Puffy and cheesy. Okay. I just had a mint, so I'm not going to. Yeah, I don't yeah. think they'd go with a mint. Okay. Now, if we can just see if it's the way it's going. Ready? There's a. I'll give you the verbal overview. Uh, you've seen the, the the map before, so it's nothing new there. Um, so there will be a couple of. At least probably a couple of motions I'll be asking for tonight. Um, one is revolving test pits, um, and the other one is uh, not sure it'll be a motion, but um, I have a new wrinkle to present in terms of a test pit um, that affects the town directly. Um, but I want to just start off by letting you know that the long awaited for engineering services agreement that was in process way too long was accepted about um, seven weeks ago, eight weeks ago. So that's been in place for a while. Um, the immediate um, effect of that is that reimbursement is possible now, though we haven't received any bill for services yet. Um, so that's not a moot point, but it's a, it's a, it's a good point. The grant writing, this goes back to the $3.3 uh, million dollars that uh, Moortown is eligible for. For a grant for this project um, is somewhat on hold. Um, Emily Hackett, who's the grant writer, um, is basically just waiting for test fit data. And so that leads me to the next update uh, from you, or for, for you, rather. And that's to update you in terms of um, where stakes have been put in to um, to note where we're going to be digging test pits on a couple of pieces of property, uh, one on Tony Farm Road, uh, Chris and Gray Stevenson's property, uh, and also uh, up here behind the school here. And if you want to take a look at the map, uh, that's the second piece down there, and just orient <coughs> you about what you're looking at here. Uh, just so you'll know kind of the test fit. So if you'll hold it so that the the, um, the white border is at the bottom, uh, mm -hmm. and I'll sort of start from the top um, where it says Route 100B, you can see the river kind of going through the map goes to the top. Where the X is, that's the um, Upper Valley Services property that was seen as a possibility uh, for a site uh, that was walked by Otter Creek and uh, three members of the committee, Ray, um, Dave Westerman and myself um, a few weeks ago, and it was pretty obvious after we got through that property, walked it from Common Road down to uh, 100, uh, down to Dickerson Road, that that really wasn't going to be worked out. The soils didn't look like they were going to be enough of them, plus the slopes were fairly significant there. Um, sort of, it was a good exercise for us to do, but um, it turned out that that wasn't going to be viable. Um, if you just go a little bit further down uh, to where the other X is, that's the Cutler property. That's the conjunction of Common Road and Moortown Mountain Road. And the X's in this case uh, signify that those are properties that we're not going to be considering now for test pits. Okay. Um, I'm going to, uh, the question mark, which is over there on the, um, um, to the left of where the Walker Valley Services is, I'm going to be getting to that in a second. Um, the the other um, what the and the site um, the furthest down on the on the left there um, the the this, um, where the circle is um, that is where the school um, system is at this point stakes have been added there 
Uh, and the other circle that's over to the left is the uh, Stevenson property, Alcone Farm Road. So those are the two sites that we'll be uh, digging test pits in for sure. That's, um, we have um, decided to, to pursue those two spots. Um, the, and I, I do want to talk a little bit about how we're going to get the test pits dug, uh, but I want to update you on the sites first and then, and then we'll go to that. Um, so I'll start with the question mark that's up there. Um, next Upper Valley Services, that's the Bozak Meadow that's off Murphy Road and borders the river um, when you cross the, the bridge when you leave the village going north. Uh, mm -hmm. That's the meadow that you see, and, they, and they've been running um, beef cows on there, uh, fattening them up in the summer for the last oh, probably eight or nine years or so. Um, and uh, the soils there have always come up on the soils map as being a possibility. So when the uh, committee and Otter Creek was uh, taking a look at the sites um, a few weeks ago, um, I wasn't there, but Ray, David Westerman, and, and uh, Robert Clark and the hydrologist from Otter Creek went over and sort of stood along the edge of the meadow there on, on Murphy Road and kind of looked over and kind of took a look at it. Because if you, that meadow has two tiers. The one that's next to the, the forested area is the higher tier, and then there's, a, so and then there's another tier that goes down before it gets to the river. Um, and it turns out that um, those, there are some building sites in there that the Bozaks have uh, established, and there actually have been test pits dug uh, for the area. So there's already data that's available there. Um, and we discovered this after the, the meeting when David went over and talked to Bill and Mary about, um, you know, just like reminding them about what the committee is doing and wondering whether or not this is something that you know they might be interested in pursuing. Um, their initial reaction was not, um, you know, they weren't interested. They felt that these were residential sites that they um, were planning on selling at some point, um, and having the test fit data available. You know, obviously uh, that was available for them to start that process whenever they wanted. Um, one of the um, things that came up in that discussion was the uh, you know, possible sales price. And they felt like what they would be asking might be, you know, significantly more than might be, might, we might be able to bear with the project. Mm -hmm. um, but it, in fact, it may not be. So um, another discussion with them may be forthcoming and we need to have another meeting with Otter Creek to see whether or not, because uh, they're going to take a look at, they can pull the test pit data and see whether or not it's, you know, it seems viable to continue that that conversation and kind of take that down that road until there's either an, inter an interest or, or not um, from them. Um, so moving on, if you'll, the other circle that's there uh, is sort of in the lower right-hand corner of the property. And, um, that's off South Hill. And for those of you that may be familiar with this, that is town property. That's part of the town forest. Um, I was initially not very optimistic about that. And frankly, most of it was because I wasn't very really familiar with the with where that borders on South Hill. But Ray and David Westerman and, and Robert and hydrologists went up there and took a look. And in fact, the, the slopes and the soils up there might be pretty good. So this raises a significant question um, and dilemma because um, if the town is willing to have test pits dug up there to ascertain whether or not the soils are adequate, um, there's lots of issues here. There's the town forest plan, there's the distance from the village. That um, seems considerable the distance um, from the village. In discussions with Otter Creek and with Emily Hackett with the state, um, a couple things have come up that we were not aware of were possible from an engineering perspective. Um, it's actually possible to, um, and I, I may not be using the right term, and Ray, you know, jump in here if, if I'm overstating this or getting the right wording, is that it's actually possible to create a, um, to, to put piping up there without excavating a, from here in the village all the way up there through the forest, you can actually go underground with a drilling mechanism that would be able to run pipe that far from the village up to that site. 
And the pipe would only wouldn't even would barely need to be a foot underneath the ground because anything that's pumped up there would drain back after it was pumped. So there's no need to be below a frost line or anything like that. So we have, and that's one of the discussions we need to have with Potter Creek in terms of its viability in terms of, because it could be proposed as a solution and, and an engineering solution could come up, you know, in, in uh, um, estimates done for the cost. However, um, you know, it is, um, Currently, and I don't know, and Chris, actually, I'm glad you're here because, um, you know, you've been intimately involved with this project in terms of the town, with the forest stuff, and you may want to come up here for this. John, that's Oh, okay. Um, and, um, that's right, that's right. Oh. Um, so, and that's right. So, anyway, so it's, you know, I don't want to say that this is, I don't want to overstate this, that, um, that it's, um, you know, what kind of... Uh, disturbance there would be uh, in terms of the actual construction and the and what we would be looking at, at on site um, up on the top of next to South Hill. Um, but it 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 sounds like it's it's a um, that if the soils are reasonable up there and extensive enough that it might be an option worth pursuing. But in order to do that, that we would need permission you know, the select board need to grant permission to, to do the test pits up there. Um, now that may or may not be enough information at this point to make a decision. Um, and I don't know enough about the, the forest plan that's been going on and whether if it's, if it's extensive for this entire lot or a portion of it. So I wanted to, but it, it, it's a, but it seems like a viable project. And Ray, I don't know, is there anything else that you would add to that other than what I mentioned about that site? No, I, I think you've got it. Uh, I think you hit it pretty well, Clark. Uh, yeah, it, it's pretty well covered. The boring up the hill is a, a distinct possibility. Um, as far as permanent disturbance, I don't anticipate a lot, but during construction, there would be some disturbance. Once it's done, it's done, it, it's over. And then it's just a maintenance thing after that. Um, so that's one of the, you know, obviously a lot of new information for not only the select board, but for the folks that have been working really hard on the forest plan. I, and I know a, a bit about this, just I know that um, uh, John Smelter has been involved and, you know, it's come up periodically <clears throat> in commission meetings as well. So, um, that is, um, and if we're able to, um, depending on what we find out when we get information from the best that's in, in Doug um, at the Bozak property, <coughs> whether or not the town is willing to do uh, some test fits up on South Hill, these are, you know, relatively significant um, uh, developments that, that we were not aware of. So, um, between Ray and I, um, we can try to answer any questions about the test pit locations at this point. And, you know, we're happy to take feedback or information regarding the property that the town owns. What was this one out there? Yeah. Um, oh, oh, that other part, that other, that's um, um, Dave and Elga's property oh, that was considered at one point. So, yeah, I should have crossed that out. Sorry. That, that, that stray little dot there. Yeah, that's not a consideration. Well, thanks, Doc. So, where was the test pit be here? In the, yeah, like right on the property. Well, no, I mean, where the button or where the, that is, John, it's, it would probably be more a, a little uh, bit further south on South Hill. Um, okay. And yeah, so that, and that's the sort of thing that, um, I mean, and actually, Ray, you were. Um, <clears throat> Is the, the town property that's up off South is border South Hill? Is all of that relatively in the same slope, or is it varied it's, in that area? It's pretty much it, pretty much it's it's pretty, yeah, it's pretty level. It's okay. you know, sloping towards South Hill. Um, once you get in there, ways obviously you're you're coming down the mountain at some point, but right. we're not going to go that far. The the, uh, the leach the disposal field to be on the uh, level a part of the uh, property up there. So it would be approximately uh, 
um, you know, the, where we looked at fits was approximately oh, 300 yards off the road. Yeah. So right now we have scheduled um, Stevenson's and then the school property, correct? Right. Yeah. Um, I think we should probably go ahead and do the, the town property up there. Um, while we're doing it, just because I mean, does it make sense to come back in six months after right. we yeah. decide that hey, that's a good idea? What or, is it, four hours roughly? So, $200 or whatever, it was. right? Yeah, so it, you know, I think it's also <laughs> regardless of what happens in the long term for this project. I mean, we, I think we've talked about this in time to time. It's, it's information that we know this is data that we don't have now, and whether right. it's you know, a private property owner or a town property, well, this is information that we'll have that may or may not be useful in the future, but at least we'll have it, you know, and possibly, you know, yes. access it at some point. Uh, yeah, as, go ahead. As far as the Bozak property, so you already have test pit data, so technically you need to dig more pits. We don't know larger scale, or do you, yeah. yeah, it depends on what the data is showing. Okay, yeah, I mean, okay. It, um, it, it may be that there's enough information there because, it, and it could be that. Um, they didn't go deep enough. Right. They need to go a little further down and yeah. get some more horizons there. Before well, yeah, they're down. obviously talking about a residential right. system. Right. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, you know, one of the other dilemmas there is like how to get across the river. Yeah. That came up mm -hmm. a couple of times. There's various solutions. Some some are you know more aesthetically yeah. attractive than others, uh, and practical yeah. safety ways mm -hmm. safer than others. Um, but anyway, um, yeah. So if the so that would be if, if we can dig those test pits on, uh, on town property, then we'll we can get a uh, creek back here to go up there and put those stakes in. And yeah. as far as using um, Poolin, I think that's probably a better option than, than our creek. Mm. Okay. Um, yeah. Does that that um, I mean Ray had checked in with them. Was it I think was it last week or the week before you asked them, Ray? Uh, we talked last week, and okay. for the mini is fifty an hour. Uh, I think that's a that's a great deal for us. Okay, fifty dollars an hour, and uh, there'll be a little extra moving it, but uh, they're they're really uh, friendly people, and uh, they'll be they'll treat us right. I'm sure of that. Okay, um, I'm just going to. I've already asked the state whether or not we get reimbursed for that. I'm pretty sure. I don't see why we wouldn't, but I, you know. I'll confirm that and make sure that even, you know that that's something that that will happen. Um, and yeah, so those are um, yeah. I mean, I, the, the test pits. Um, checking in about um, using pool and Ray. Do you know how long? How much longer is they going to be working on the on the project here? They'll be uh, in the park a lot till the end of next week, and then they'll start the the actual gravel wetland area. After that, so they'll be here the rest of the month for sure. Most of the I'm month. Sure it's, gonna, okay. it's gonna go. It's gonna go probably second week in September. Oh, okay. Right. Be so we got a little bit more of a window there. Okay, that I was a little yeah. yeah. Okay, great. Um, so the last thing I wanted to do is, um, and Chris and I have been talking about this, and we talked about this when we went to the um, and put the stakes on the property. Um, is that there's a landowner um, permission form that needs to be signed off on. So it's, and I'll need the town to do that for the test bits and I'll bring that in probably near the end of the week. I'll be down tomorrow and probably Thursday. But, um, and, and Chris, you had some concerns about that and I wasn't able to, um, to review the document adequately enough to make, to be able to, um, give it a proper summary. So if you'd be willing just to kind of share your concerns about that and we'll just kind of see where it goes from there. Okay. Um yeah, so like Corey and I have been have been working more directly with Clark on it. Uh, the letter is included in the handout that Clark put out. Um or put in the package. Yeah, it's the last and I think mean, this from the our perspective, Corey and I, I mean we've been Willing to participate with this town project. This isn't like our goal in life. So. <laughs> okay, Christmas, please, Marvin, to set the bleach field. So, um, 
I just I wanted to at least say that. So when I saw a piece of paper where I really should get a lawyer involved, I, I got nervous, right? I don't I wasn't gonna use a lawyer to help you guys out, but maybe I should. Because ultimately the second or the, the you know the paragraph starts by this authorization gets into the last sentence. The landowner has the obligation to identify all underground utilities and structures and their location on the site. Failure to identify relieves the representative and liability. Um, I mean, those are such big trigger words. It basically says that Corey and I are on the hook for yeah. going wrong. And all of a sudden, now I definitely want a lawyer. Um, but I mostly was just rewording that because there's a lot of, you know, really, I think I'm working with a town, not a consulting firm. Um, and I, I think really we just want to make sure that. I can, we can disclose what we know about the property, but other than the deed that we've purchased, I have no idea what, you know, I, I get hearsay and things, but, you know, I have no reason to suppose anything else is going on there, but I can't be held liable to information that I, I don't even know, right? So that was where it began for me. Um, and then I started redlining it to say, I wanted to make sure I got a copy of the task because I was told I would get that. I wanted to make sure that, if it's not stepping and digging, and I would know who it is, and I would be there the day of, and you know, I would I I read my stuff that basically said I want the basic relationship through the project. Um, so I think really where you brought it back though is the point that I don't need a contract with Otter Creek necessarily. Um, the town and, the, and Otter Creek are, are working together, and then I my relationship. As I've seen every other dot on that page is, is with the town. And my liability is whether the town is, uh, does something right or wrong. That, and then again, I haven't seek, sought counsel on this. And God, you know, I'm not sure it's worth doing that for us. Um, okay. So I'll just stop talking. Tonight. Yeah. So the, and I don't know whether this is, you know, it, it, I guess it's a wrinkle. I'm not quite sure. Um, where to, what to do with it, but um, you know, originally we were pretty sure that the town was going to be doing the excavating, and uh, now you know it looks like we probably will be looking at an outside firm. So I um, I suspect um, that we probably ought to check with Coolin as well, Ray, about you know whether or not they need a document signed and what it might look like for them. Does that make sense? So um, so Poolin would have to. Call in their own dig safe and get their name on the ticket directly. Uh, as far as utility location, um, as far as anything else, I don't think you know. Other than, I don't think we need anything signed from them, or they need. Uh, they, we already have. Ins they're already insured with the town for their. You know, they're already have, have proof of insurance, so we're covered on that. No matter what they do in the town. So as far as I know, um, and they just have to do their own dig safe. So uh, we would need, you know, three or four days notice for them to to do that. So just remind me, with dig safe, um, um, I thought that with dig safe, they would they only surveyed within the right of way, or if they contract with someone, will will they basically survey wherever you want them to go? Is that the case? Yeah, I use a, a kind of a general term with dig safe because there there are other underground locators as well um, that go out go outside the right of way and dig safe. They are, I you know, it's kind of funny where their borders are. Most of the time, it's within the right of way, but uh, uh, sometimes it's up to um, like on a power line up to where the cable comes down. Okay. The so, uh, or up through the meter, or however where you want to put that. Can, um, so. can you check with Dick? I mean, can you check with Coolin and see, you know, how they'd like to proceed, um, proceed with that, Ray? And then I can you, certainly. Uh, okay, I can and, certainly. I can certainly do that and, uh, okay. right tomorrow. Because we might be able to kind of figure out like where those stakes are, Chris. You know, where things would cross, and we could, you know, the big stakes out that way. Right? Yeah. yeah. Right, and, and coming back to Chris's little his question on the on the the document, I mean, um, I mean, we can even eliminate this the sentence failure to identify these reliefs that were representative of any liability. 
I mean, I think those are the, the thing that you should concern with most right there, right? Yeah, I'd have to reread my red line, but yeah, I mean, I certainly <laughs> want to be held liable to information I might not even hold. Well, right, you don't know. That, so, yeah. I mean, as long as, um, you know, we, they're, if everyone's to the best of their ability, um, dig safe, we're using dig safe, you let us know what you know, you know, if something, if they break something, it's, it's our responsibility, you know, we're... Um, so I'm not going to say, well, Kristen, tell us this, you know, so we can break it. Yeah. Um, okay. But I think working with with those guys or Ray is with Poulin, Dick Safe, um, and Linda Ford would be willing to to work to make sure that you're not held liable for something you're not aware of. So would I even need to sign a document with the consulting firm? Well, that's what I. That's, that's, what, what, I that's what I need. To that's what I need. To okay, that's, that's a really good question. question. That's exactly what I stated. Right. It, it may not even be necessary at this point. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. we'll just put it for the back. For the back. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. That's yeah. yeah. That's yeah. pretty much yeah. You know, yeah. Standard. Yeah. Dry, I mean, dry. I just, yeah. If their truck broke and spilled oil on that field, I mean, I. I'd also wanted to get cleaned up. Like, yeah, I it's so important. Important. the liability yeah. really is on the town. Yeah. If the project goes wrong and I as a landowner would be supported and cleaned up. But for me to get really articulate with the language, I'd rather have no language, honestly. And yeah. that this is town is right. Yeah, right. Let me um I'll come up with a with a device. Uh, yeah, can send it yeah, to me. They, yeah, right. Yeah. Okay, and I'll check. The, I'll send it by you. Uh, All right. Okay. Um. So you know, again, engineering services was accepted. Grant writing and grading for data from tech pits. Um. We're hopefully going to be setting up the dates. Um, it's up to the Otter Creek to set up the dates because they have to work with the state and have a couple of people from there. Archaeology has to come through and clear the sites as well, which would have to happen up on the hill as well. Um, and yeah, and uh, uh, schools like yeah. well, uh, oh yeah, thanks. Um, so Ray Daigle, the facilities manager for the district, is going to come and take a look at it probably on Wednesday. Um, I, I'm I, I'm sort of prepared in some respects not to get to get a little pushback at that point because. With the site that's up there, it has to be there has to be an alternative site that's that's identified when this put in. So if you if you want it, it doesn't really make sense to dig in it in their alternative site because at some point that may have to be used. Mm -hmm. So we we and we didn't we don't know where that is because uh, we, we don't have that that the drawings or uh, we we have, we have some drawings but nothing that, that detail. So Ray's going to have to take a look and and um, on the. He, he's actually going to indicate on the on the uh, stakes that are up there whether or not it's in the um, in the uh, in the accessory place but... in their in their stairs so in their backup site right yeah it's if it's in their backup site yeah so it, there's no more room to do we don't we don't know that yeah. we'll have to wait did we further consider uh, fields down here yeah so the other thing that you know it begs the question because this uh, in Warren um, their facility is underneath the soccer you know their rec fields up in the school mm -hmm. um however they're on top of a lot with that sand and we're on clay and we're on clay yeah. and so but um so I said you know why can't we just like 30 build it up like 30 feet put it but yeah. it's um now I'm going to paraphrase the hydrologist but you could put a hundred feet out there, but where that where that ends and where that next horizon starts, mm -hmm. if it's closer than eight inches, it doesn't matter. Okay. If it's a foot, you could put it in there. But if it's only if you're basically if this is play, you could put a hundred feet there. But once you get, but if it gets to that point. It's going to start to spread out. It has to have some other material that would have been over the top of that clay, clay in a naturally occurring mm -hmm. basket. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's you know it you know does it make practical sense to most of us? Probably not. No. I understand it from a from a yeah. engineering perspective, but it is frustrating from other perspective because yeah, it would be you know having an elevated. Playing field with some fancy <laughs> fencing up there to so kids <laughs> fall off the edge of the might be kind of neat, but um, it ain't gonna happen. 
So that's not a viable site after all. Yeah. <laughs> as far as the rest of the town property, I just want to remind everybody that it gets a lot of use by townspeople. And in essence, it's really their decision. Um, we'll be bringing, the, in terms of the forest management plan, we're bringing in, uh, we will be uh, holding a, a forum. We have to talk about when that could be. Um, and um, inviting town people. And, and so I don't have a problem with the test pits, but certainly we have to be very, very careful to be yeah, yeah, that's I'm glad you mentioned that, John. I mean, and on the other side of things, um, that if if the town was supportive of that, not only from a leadership perspective, but also from a town perspective, uh, citizen perspective, that um, it would if we that, that could be an enormous savings on a project in order to be able to use town property as opposed to buy property. So, mm -hmm. um, anyway. But yeah, it could be an enormous increase in cost down the line. In terms of like, yeah, find that breaks in the middle of the woods. Who's going to repair your lawn? Who's well, going to get up there and get to it? Yeah, yeah, those are those are all the questions that we'll have to uh, <laughs> yeah. So, looking at the bigger picture of this, is this system how is it funded? Is it user funded or is everyone I'll paying be, for it? No, no, I'll be partly user funded. I mean. The only reason some towns get sewer is because they are fully user funded. Right. Yeah, some of them are. Yeah. Mm, yeah. A lot of them are. You have to look at all of your lines. Who's repairing your lines? Who's qualified to repair your lines? Are you going to have to create a whole entire position with someone qualified to fix these lines when they fail? Because they fail a lot. And then you have angry people when the lines fail. More often than not, then you have to look at your billing, your billing rates, interest, the amount of added cost on office staff and doing that billing, whether you're doing it monthly or quarterly, it's time consuming. And I know because I do billing every three months. I deal with sewer and water every day. <laughs> it's time consuming. Who's going to read all your meters? Is the town buying meters? Are individuals buying meters? If the individual is buying meters, so you got to break somewhere the meter's not working, who's responsible for that? How is that going to work? How are you effectively doing the building? If the town's paying for them, that's a huge cost to get those meters and to get set up so that you can weed them in the process of what you're doing, how that system is going to coordinate in with the billing system you have. I mean, there's a lot of things. Well, a lot of moving pieces. Well, all of this is great on the small side. <laughs> In the bigger picture, there's a lot of moving pieces. Mm -hmm. I mean, are you going to hire it out? So, who are you going to hire it out with to do that? And that's costly. And when you're doing well, filling, a meter reading is incorrect. So then you have to pay that person to come back out and check their reading, re-update it. I mean, uh, these are all good point. points. But, uh, um, these are all good points, and I think I think you've got to give us time to put together this feasibility study, and then I think you can, uh, if you're not satisfied with the answers, then you can ask the questions. But we we've talked about a lot of things we've already mentioned. In our group, and they'll be addressed in the feasibility study when we when we get to that point. Yeah, yeah that information will be as the uh, on, on the design end when these things are beginning to be rolled out at the sixty and ninety percent um, done um, point. That these are questions that will come up. Right, and there's going to be a you know a town wide. Um, discussion on this and right. vote. I mean, right. um, there's a lot. We're right at the beginning stages yeah, yeah. here. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. You think Callie brings up a, a lot of good concerns that will be will need to be addressed um, yeah. Yeah, as right. we move forward. But we need to kind of take steps to get there. Uh, at this point, we're just trying to find where we can do test pits. Um, right. And and move forward, uh, reminding us or everyone we're still under 
um, state funding with this. Um, so it's not money that's being just just tossed away. And you know, the reasons um, there are a lot of good reasons for it environmentally. Um, and but there's a lot of costs associated with it that we'll have to look and will that be the balance. You know, what's um, and then as a group, as a town, we'll make a decision whether we go forward or not. Mm -hmm. Exactly. I know it's probably you've been thinking about it, but why don't you, you know, resident have a choice if they want to be on it or not, or we get to the point that. Yeah, that's a good question. So, you know, so, so, put in your system and, uh, oh, yeah, there's actually more than this. It's so, so, three people that are put in, you know, systems and people that are contemplating that. Um, it's generally speaking, it's a voluntary process. However, and this is where I am going to be careful about describing it in detail because I don't know enough. Um, there are some instances when, depending on where someone lives and what is designated as the floodway, that if a system fails, that if there is a municipal system that runs by, mm -hmm. that the person is required to tap into that. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's not if someone's system if, if someone's system as far as they know is viable and the system is installed and the pipes run by the person does not or is not compelled mm -hmm. to now I, and I, there may be wrinkles on that that I yeah that's that spoke on but that's but if someone's fails they would probably want to look up to a system I would yeah that would yeah. so, yeah. um, right. so maybe a good option option of a bond. Oh, yeah, so they all, have the option yeah. for a hookup. They don't necessarily have to use it. They pay a fixed rate every month right. for, in essence, having access to the hookup. Right. They yeah, don't we, have to use yeah, it. Yeah, well, but where where this is going to be, yeah, we're all right. on. Yeah, yeah, that's way we're way far away from that. But yeah, these are all legitimate. Chris, which go? Specific to the test pits and the town fourth parcel, I was just gonna. Um, Point out that there are some features that we wouldn't want to have an excavator go over up there. Um, in terms of some cellar holes and rock wall, I can't remember exactly what's articulated up there. But it would be, I would propose that like someone from the rec committee and Mike from Bird's Eye be involved with just the flagging and the access to the test pits. And I like, generally support it. And ironically, that's one of the areas that we're going to do pretty thick harvest. So yeah, it might be clear ground anyway. Or, yeah. Can you send can you send me his contact information? Yeah. Okay. Can That'd be great. Uh, uh, because uh, it'll be yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah, just let me, you know, give me the contact information. Yeah. So that when so it's ready, ready. Yeah. Okay. And um I'd like to make a motion. I <clears throat> feel comfortable having this official. So I will make a motion that we allow the more town wastewater committee uh to have certificates. Doug on the town property uh, border in South Hill. Any further discussion on the motion? All in favor, vote aye. 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 Okay, cool. Thanks all. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, thank you, Ray. Thank you, Ray. Uh, yeah, thank, thank you, everybody. Good night. Good night. All right, so next, uh, moving along here, we're a little bit behind. Um, but we have the mountain tree, the mountain road tree. Where is the mountain road tree? Is he appearing before us? Or is this the blodge tree? Yeah, the blodge tree. We need them. So let's see, we've got uh, a couple of here uh, from. Um, Thanks for the uh, stack. Oh, yeah. Appreciate yeah, it. Yeah. Thanks. Oops, sorry, John. Um, so first we have, um, let's see, Knudsen, so that's, that's your guy, right? Who? Knudsen? That's not your guy? Yeah, uh, Ben uh, Kunderson. Is that what you're talking about? The yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, and he said, if I only need to cut brush, or the tree rather, and not deal with any of the wood or brush, it's $1,500. And, uh, and if we have to remove the brush, then it's 1950 And 
We have snapping turtle works. Oh, it's not. Uh, his is 3,000. And he says, uh, tree is to be safely dropped via aerial lift, climbing and rigging, all brush to be chipped and removed, so on and so forth. So, you know, the, the wood is going to be taken by um, uh, Guy Martin. Chart Martin, yes. Yeah, yes. Uh, Guy Martin. No relation. Yeah. The bio was Yes, the wood. So it's a pine, right? Pine tree. Yes, yeah. yeah. So he's yeah. all. He'll take care of that. We don't. We don't. We don't need it. So that's three thousand. And then three words is even worse. It's fifty four hundred. Yeah. So I go with fifteen hundred, um, and just leave the brush. Yeah. Yes. So it sounds good for everybody. Yeah, I think that's what we originally proposed. Uh, yeah. Basically, drop the tree and yeah. leave the leave whatever's there. Yeah, yeah. So it's right. Yeah. The other guy's going to take the, the, the right. The he can do what he wants with it. Yeah, yeah. It's on his property. Yeah. I mean, I'd go as high as the nineteen fifty. We get rid of the brush, but if we can just leave it there, let's just leave it. There. Yeah, a little biodegrade. It's good for the that tree. Yeah. So it's good. Yeah. Is that the guy? Oh, he's, he's really good. He really wants, wants to be in my house. Yeah, he's yeah. good trees. Okay, did something behind the front of the garage. So it's, all right, yeah, you did a nice job over there. Yeah, yeah. any more? Yeah. Yeah. So I'll, yeah. I'll make I'll make a motion. I just made one. You just need to look at it. Second motion. Okay. I'll, uh, any further discussion on it? All in favor? All right. Aye. Aye. All right. Yes, you know. Okay, very good. Um, all right, so there's no one else online. I just want to make sure there's anyone that. Had any comments? So we have reports, communications. Sasha, old mess. Which one? One communication. I've tried calling her. I haven't been. That's too bad. Yeah. But anyways, go ahead. Um. Letter of resignation from Karen. So she started a new copy business. I don't know if you guys knew that. And, oh, yeah. Uh, she said it all out. Yeah. And when she was hired, she always that's what she said. She was she roast copy. That's why her her, her license plate says roast, if you're wondering what that meant. Not just that she was getting roasted. Um <laughs> 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 right. So, uh, she and a, a couple of weeks ago she started uh her or opened her coffee business, which is located at uh, the junction of 17 and 100. Yeah. Um, okay. It's a little okay. uh, uh, movable building type thing. Yeah. Right, right across from the uh, the old Mountain Mountain Tavern. Yeah, no, I know yeah. what you're talking about. Yeah. Uh, where the where he yeah. used to be, where there's a cannabis yeah. shop there. Yeah. This is yes in that part. It's off. That's right. where it's off. Coffee, coffee and cannabis can't go along with that. Good morning. Good morning, your morning, morning routine. So she's, she's, she's there. The she's there in a little normal. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Like one of those food truck kind of things. Yeah, it's a little trailer oh, type yeah. thing. Oh, well, I didn't know that. So, uh, she started doing it already? I yeah. said last two weeks ago. So, I'm gonna, she, I'm gonna I think she's there Wednesday through Saturday or I'm Wednesday through the weekend. Yeah. And um, so I would say that's why we're losing her. And she's yeah. been a great um, asset for the town um, and has really helped get our zoning back up. and. Unfortunately, she spent the last year really kind of repairing what had been gone wrong the year and a half or two before. Um, so uh, we will work with the uh, uh, the planning commission um, to real to try to find someone else. But I've got a call into her. Let's let's see where her head's at. Uh, maybe she'll have some time. I don't know. But all right. So. We won't accept the resignation. Yet. Not tonight. Let's. So would that be something we would have to maybe get back to the Central Vermont Regional Planning and get the temporary? That's an idea. I mean, yeah. Get um, 
What was the name? Was the name? Why do I want to say red? Yeah. Oh, she it? said she's willing to help as far as training. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, no, I think she, she'll work with us, but all right. I'll hold my voice. All right, Sasha, what's next? Well, the four liquor lights are not flowers. All right, you can sign those. That the fire uh, secretary contest for approving that errors and motivation. Um, we've been looking at on some changes, one with the bond traps, and the other two were just kind of moving things back and forth to different properties that are next to each other. Okay. We will sign off on this. Then, look at the school in the new. No changes on that. They again, formally signed and sent over to the school board. And at last meeting, I gave you a great agreement. I gave you the wrong one, showing you the correct one. Yes, sir. And that is. Paula Woods' turn on the DRB is up, and she would like to continue in the way of waiting for that. Um, so moved on that. Is there a second? Okay. Kelly seconds it. Um, the vote is for um, um, Paula Woods, <laughs> pardon me, uh, Paula Woods for the uh, uh, DRB. All in favor of reappointment? Vote aye. 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 And then bring me on the stop and just to check in and see if anything wanted and discuss them on the request. No, but you know what? Um what next meeting I'll have a recommendation for that. They're the ones that I think we all remember in March. Um it's so funny, you know, I had never heard a damn thing about freewheeling and then they must have gone on this PR blitz where every week there's been, or not recently, but the, for consecutive weeks, there was a lot of stuff in the Valley Reporter about them and reading about them. They really do um, do a good job and seem to really um, support the community. So I think it's something we should um, consider, but let me come up with a figure based on what they ask, what we have for monies. Um, because they did go about it the right way. They actually brought us in um, a petition um, that we did not uh, put on the, the ballot, but I do think it's something we should discuss again. So we'll do that next time, Sasha. Robin, what do you have for us? Uh, Stefan asked me about the ACO, if we can begin moving that forward. I didn't know what that process was. Is that going to be a public hearing next or something like that? Animal control ordinance. Yeah, I we kind of agreed on all the wordage and everything, but I don't know where it goes from there. He asked me about it, and I was like, I don't know what the next step is. So I'm, not, I'm just leaning on you guys to tell me what's the next step. You know, I think um very good question whether that is something that we as a group just vote on or whether we need to have town wide uh approval right. where we would do something on like town meeting or something yeah. so we will get back with you on that next meeting okay good uh the only other thing i had is the lady who came in uh last week on the trash in taylor street uh has somehow been bypassed and no one has removed her trash so she reached out to me today i don't even want to ask martin and the guys to Bring a loader over there. But I don't know what to tell. You know how much is there? There is a good amount. She said there wasn't. She didn't have the ability to put it into the dumpster at Barrows. Uh, she thought that the dumpster was full to begin with, but it's all like soaked in water long. So it's not a huge amount, but it's enough where you know I think we're either going to need an excavator or maybe to pick it up. And dump it into something, the back of a dump truck, or they bring it to a landfill, or mm -hmm. something. Like that. Look at the on that. 
Yeah. Because I'm pretty sure from what I've heard, if you have a dumpster to get reimbursed, you have to have someone watching what's going in it. Yeah. And I'm placing all those those regs on that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just not sure what direction to go in. I mean, I can't physically yeah. do it myself. So I didn't know. Uh, so I mentioned it to Sasha. Right. He said with something we'd have to tell Martin to, to go and deal with. It. So uh, I just wish I know whether it was stuff that you know they throw in the back of the truck and then we can throw in the back of the or throw in our yeah. dumpster here. I can go back and get some photos. Yeah, why don't you go check and see how much it is? Oh. It was like a bunch of old couches and stuff that are all water soaked. It doesn't appear to be like you know massive. But she was right at the top of Terrace by the roadway. Yeah. So I was a little bit questionable about how much damage she could have actually had that high up on the road in that particular location. But yeah, that's what it was. I mean, there. There. Yeah, I mean, she's pretty far up from the river, and nobody else down there. But we already made a commitment and kind of said we were going to do something about it. So right now, I'm I'm the one who's stuck in between a rock and a hard place. So. We'll go take a look at I'll it. I'll take a look at it. I'll send some photos. I'll fill them off in an email and maybe we can go from there. I think yeah. it's not necessarily the flag. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Yeah. So, I, I mean, I think we. So, how does it all get wet if it wasn't flooding? I mean, I, I don't get it. It's, I think it was coming into our basement. Into our house. Oh, coming right. into our basement. The run, runoff was just flowing into our basement. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so I mean, I looked at the stuff. It was pretty. It was. It wasn't. In, it was in pretty bad shape when I looked at it, and it's been out there for a couple of weeks now. So and with the team already duplicating services because that could be considered um, personal property through FEMA. So if FEMA reimburses the homeowner for personal property. Does part of that cover the removal of the property? Of yeah, that. I don't. I don't know. So. All I know is she's not here. She asked for help, and we told her that we'd do something. Go we'll check it out, and then so, just ask her though yeah. if she's getting good you know, assistance. That we talked about it, have some photos. Yeah, then Gordon would be on it. You know, we might be like, we might have piece her for some. Yeah, yeah. and oh. that would probably be a good question for Tim Baker. Yeah. Okay. So how actually Matt Tim Baker is okay. dealing with um flood debris and secret drive. Okay. I'll get I'll get what I can for information on what she's got and uh, so the yeah. other dumpsters we filled helping people because we didn't do the FEMA thing, we won't get reimbursed or something. We're supposed to get reimbursed. We Oh, okay. Yeah, we yeah, like, we know yeah. it's have to be reimbursable. So we got told three times that they were going to pick up trash on Secret Drive too, and it's not. Yeah. Good. So it's well, FEMA is well, very picky when it comes to that, which is why. Well, we had to help. Yeah. Yeah, we got a yeah, nice brown down one failure, and then they were able to use a tree cracker. It's hot by the public health hazard. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, that was my only comment on those two things. All right, so you'll work that. Yeah. Callie, what do you have? Not a, not a shalot. Um, Don, Big D? Well, yeah, is this where I should I talk about the town hall? Yeah, why don't you go ahead? A little bit? We can do old no, business town hall. Just a, what? We can do, yeah, old business, whatever it is here. Let's just. Well, just a quick update because you know I can't even I can't even see what time it's going to be. It's one it's eight thirty right now. Yeah, it's like eight twenty. Eight twenty. So I'll try to be brief. So we're we're moving into the um, design documents. You know that's what we you know we that's our next step that we approve with some funds of twenty five. Uh, twenty two five twenty five or something. Mm -hmm. to, to do design development. Um, they're going to want to be sending us what, what typically would be an AIA form, you know, an architect with, you know, with an yeah. agreement where they've all, they've got us, you know, be sending them an email telling them we're doing the, the next phase in their proposal and then bring them to tonight. But a couple of things just to keep on the radar is that I think we will is separate from this that they didn't include is that we're going to need to do a survey 
or at least a topographical, not a full blown heavy duty serving, but a topographical, so that because based on some of the design and work that we're going to do, or we, you know, or renovations to help mitigate the water and stuff going in and the handicap access and stuff, we'll need to, like I said, do a topographical survey that could run okay. run about between fifteen and two thousand dollars. I have two local firms that are I emailed to see if they had any availability and they do and I haven't sent I'm going to send them a drawing for them to price up and I'll come back to you guys but I just okay. want to let everybody know that, that that's impossible that's something the renovations there. might go outside of the town property or oh no 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 okay. just to get it so it's accurate to I, and I will walk, meet you, walk you through the design, but in some of the uh, the rear door, the side entrance door, there's this huge amount of water that flows there. In that in the design, it's changing the entrance around back and the handicap oh, accessibility, okay. and it, it can't okay. be off. They, you know, they've got to yeah, no, that it has to be exact measurements. Yeah, and then um, I'd like to just get just a nod of approval. Or I'd like to send out an RFP that I it's not quite written yet, so I've got to you know kind of show it to everybody or email it to everybody. And this would be to um, possibly look into a construction manager approach for the project rather than the other way we would get the hard uh, design document drawings and then we would send out, you know, drawings to contractors to get, you know, firm pricing, you know, a GC would price a whole job. Mm -hmm. Or a construction manager, you know, I won't get too into the weeds right now in describing what their role is, but their role is that they would come in on the, into the job sooner, do the cost, and with the construction document way that I did, would have to Go get some the estimates, staff. pay for an estimate two times along this process yeah. which could run somewhere between three and five thousand dollars to get two construction estimates and then go that way which we might do just finish the hard drawings plans and specs run track documents and then it goes out to bid or you can do a construction manager that joins the process early on so that they help not only in working on some of the design, design costing, what changes could be taking place, you know. So you, you have to pay a little, you know, pay, instead of paying for a hard construction estimate, you'd have a construction manager who can manage that. Well, you know, who just, and then, then he brings in subcontractors and gets three prices for all the subcontractors. So <laughs> and then they have more of a vested interest in just getting, they work through the whole design development and then the CDs, which is the contract document plans and specs. And then I can read, I have a whole list to explain it to you how it will all work. But I won't get into the weeds of that right now. But what I'd like to ask is that we have no commitment to this, but to go ahead and do an RFP and send it out to a few firms and get a proposal for this, this route then we can decide further down, you know, in a little bit down the road. Meanwhile, the design documents will continue on. But we bring either a construction manager on board or we would go the other route and just finish the construction documents and do what I did. So at this point, it won't, it'll be just my working with uh, Peter and getting an RFP out and Get it, you know, sending it to you guys, and then you have to send it out from like we did the last time. So I wanted to see if that would be all right with everybody. All right. If, if, if there's nothing that we're obligated to, um, no, it would give us a better perspective once you get it back on what that person would do and, yeah. and where in the process, and then we can make a decision on if we're moving, you know, which way we, yeah, we would suggest it. Um, uh, I guess I don't have any problem with it. Good. Okay. Right. Is everyone else? What's everyone else's thoughts? So, as long as I'm not paying. 
Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, no, 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 Instead of buying another one, it's not like they use it all that much. You know, just use the time. Yeah, we have this one. There's there's three or four people yeah, that I know they use it. Can use it and use it. I think ours comes under my name, but I mean, anyone can use whatever yeah, title right, you well, want. We just wanted to make sure that we did. Then, um, well, a week or two ago, I got a text from Karen Horn, who was here, I think it was, she was at a planning board meeting. I think she's on the planning board, right? Yep. And she was wondering, I guess the meeting was here in the late afternoon. And she was sending me like, do you know whatever happened to the shades discussion about getting shades? Because I guess the sun was blaring in there. Like no one could see the screen or something or whatever. So. I went to her, oh, okay, I'll I'll remind everybody. And I know that was something that we're maybe going to. Yeah. Uh, hey, hey, we should, Sasha, is that something that we can price out, we can put into the budget this year? And we've talked about it several times. And yeah, yeah. we've all had issues with it. I know in the summer, I do. I yeah, we had a part with me. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, could see yeah. the, you know. Yeah. Uh, so, okay. So it might be that a, time to, to do something. Um, just to let you know, the scoping study is going on for the Gallagher Acres sidewalk. Um, I talked to Clark, who put me to Dave uh, Westerman because he's talked to the guy in Waterbury because about the, perhaps yeah. the wastewater system being connected to the community over there, mm -hmm. and obviously. We got to know about whether what that's all about because you can't go put a sidewalk in and then come along later and dig it up for storage like it. So yep. uh, that's one of the things that are that are on there. Um, and uh, I guess that's it. You got done. Well, good. Thank you for bringing that to our attention. The only thing I have is um, I did get an email from Blodgett's. <laughs> when we're in, <clears throat> for an update, looking for an update. So I will email them back tomorrow. Okay. Done. Tell them we'll get it done next spring. <laughs> oh, the blocks of tree. Oh, okay. I was thinking blocks of trucking somehow. I was like, no, no, no. Okay. Uh, the old blocks of tree. All right. Well, good. I'm glad that uh, you'll be able to get them uh, satisfied. Um, I don't have nothing new to add, but I will uh, look to get the uh, minutes for July 17th approved. Make a motion to approve the permits of July 17th. Thank you, Kelly. Is there a second on that? No second. D seconds that. All in favor, vote aye. Aye. All right. All right. Thank you, everybody. Um, Okay, with old business, I think we've hit a lot of, or hit enough that we don't need to hit uh, probably anything else here tonight. Yes, we might be able to put our check on there. Yep. Put our Martin was talking about fits and material. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know the location that one of the big outfit probably does not want to anymore, but that's something that. What place is that? Um, Oh, you mean rivers? Uh, oh, rivers. Yeah. Yeah, that was just rock quarry, but it wasn't really gravel. But yeah, I mean, yeah. Yeah, I think there is to be too much, um, sorry, too many towards the litigation. I mean, I don't think you could ever back back that out of what, what's gone on there. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, just something to yeah. Know what, what, what do you mean? You know what? Yeah. Wait, well, I, I misunderstood the sand pit here you're talking about? No, um, no. Uh, oh, on the gravel pit. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Gravel pit. Yeah. Oh, 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 yeah.
Oh, oh, oh wait, right, I have that be a gravel. I see. Yeah. Yeah. But if there are other materials in town, they do something with materials with how it's on it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thinking about for the future. Yeah. Is there any, uh, John, you've been around, was there any other places in town in the past that people have big gravel loads, you know, little. Yeah, you know, they used to take it out of the rivers in the old days. Oh, yeah, you know, dredging the rivers. I mean, that's that was what they used to do. Mm -hmm. you know, you yeah, Carl Wendell would have said that's it. And, um, that and then, then the site on more John Mountain Road. But that's, mm -hmm. Is that that's not Fields? No, that's actually, um, I just know her, her first name, Loretta. Um, what's, what's, what's that? It's uh, Steve Ward and Loretta Keaton. Yes, okay. Yeah, I mean, I, everyone keep your eye, your ears open. You have people here. Oh, is that right? Yeah. I think all towns are kind of in the scramble. I mean, based on Barron's, was it Barron's that closed, right? Or, or just about closed? Um, so, yes. Yeah. Uh, and then the free wheel is down there. Like I said, we'll hit that. Um, this is really nothing else there that we can pull around with. Is there anything new? If anyone's well, what, what's uh, is um, are you going to be one of the uh, judges at Walsh Mix this year for the cake itself? Or? Well, whatever they have, yeah. And I think they're. <laughs> I think everyone's needs to put that on there. Oh no, 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 I'm not signing on that. I can't do this. I already told Michelle I think he was asking me. Yeah. Well uh I know John's up for it. He John did the best. He was sure. eating those cakes like crazy. John the sample everything and yeah. wanting more. <laughs> Maybe we should find somebody from each of the four Yeah. Let me let uh, newbie take her. I could be you, Sasha. I know. Plus, an employee out of each office, too. Yeah, yeah. All right, so we do have a lot to sign. Um, this is the errors of an admission statement that was there. Um, John came in and signed the uh, the payroll for us, but signed the one that's underneath of this first sheet. Yeah. Yeah. No. Oh, perhaps. Whoops, excuse me. Oh, that's it. Your brother Shane. What am I happening with that? What happened with the what? With the guy who came in and was working to have to have his rope or something. All on the move too. Have we heard anything more about that? You guys going to go back to the planning board? But again, he came with oh, yeah. and the state had already feels it, but he was going to put the town approvals at the grow facility. Oh, yeah, yeah. No. Um, I uh, spoke to Ron like I had mentioned to them that night yeah. that we would. 
And that was the last I've heard about. I don't know where it's gone. Yeah, or not even supposed to go maybe go back to the planning. Yeah, right? it had like, yeah. Yeah. There was just stuff running back and forth. Yeah, so I mean, nothing heard, but so I was a good yeah. sign. Yeah, that was a story yeah. that broke <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes. I hope not. It's time to talk. Eight, seven. We don't have a year or something. Yeah. Fact, I was noticing um, an invoice in here for um, Lenny's. And for the guys, how is that going? Um, Good. They've all used all their. They have and they've got their stuff. Yeah, they told me it was good. Yeah. Boot warranties or boot allotment. Do they get to do a commercial for them? Or they want? Yeah. You know what? The flood of twenty three. When I need boots. <laughs> I don't think there's anything to sign, but you can just. That's you can just look at oh, that. Wow. So, no, they've been they've been great. Oh, I think it's actually been that one missing me. It's been great. Yeah, maybe not. I think that was much. <laughs> Better than that used quote. I think that they used to get used quote. No, really. <laughs> that stuff. They, they look like stuff. different prison yeah. people to me. No, no. <laughs> so when the pants would get ripped, they wouldn't fix them the first time. So there was times that I would have to rip the pants from like crop to knee or knee to bottom. And I you want to tail it. Oh, so they fix it. You take a look at that. Yeah, yeah I am sure. I, I know. Sometimes I look at them and I like. Uh, I'm not as pleased that we were able to get them into some clothing that looks like they use. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Sign that, please. I know it's in there. I just can't do so. You just it. This goes on top of the pack. That's just that was something I had missed last week. Okay, okay. I didn't it. No, it's involved. That's done already, right? There's only two on this one. That's done. Yeah. No, no, no. You have a page. Okay. Can do it. All right. I'd uh, move to adjourn. Okay. All in favor, aye. 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 Thank you.